Hello and welcome to this video. So today we are going to look at how to render absolutely crazy uh, high resolution shots. So what we need to do first is have a level sequence. So I've got a, quite a few here, but I'll create a new one. So we'll go on cinematics and add a level sequence. I'll just say okay to this and we want to create a camera. So I'll create this little camera uh, by clicking this little button here. My focal length is uh, a little bit too narrow. So we'll widen that a little bit. And that's good. I'll go to content browser, save all here. And now we are ready to render. So I'll preview that little guy there. So window cinematics movie render queue. I've got one already uh, in here. I'll delete that. I'll add the sequence we've just created, new level sequence. And here I want to, uh, so I've got one, all my settings from before, so I'll delete them. And I'll, uh, so we have here our output. So we could uh, start with that. I'll give it a um, destination render. And we want to um, select the output to uh, play to render just one frame. So I'll use custom playback range and I'll give it frame 10, 11. So that is basically not zero. And to make sure we've got one frame in here. Like last time, we can add our anti aliasing. So uh, we'll use temporal space sample count of about 16. So that's going to be up to you to determine what you uh, what you like. And of course, override anti aliasing and keep anti aliasing to none. Right, so now what uh, the high resolution shot. So here, Let's go back and select our output. So that's really where the fun is. So I've decided to have made uh, my little calculation because there's I can't remember those numbers 16 K images 16 384 and uh, height will be 9216. So I can safely say that I've never rendered an image like this in V ray. So here, okay, that's all good. So now with our high resolution, we want to say uh, four tiles and now we get some um, warnings. So let's have a look at those. Here it says we're not going to support bloom and uh, some other screen space effects. So that's fine. We, um, so this is the, the trick. Uh, auto exposure will not be supported and we need to turn on manual camera exposure. So let's select the camera. And here, instead of going in the post process volume, which we could do, uh, we've got actually manual in here, but I'm going to go back in the uh, camera because what you really want to do is set the exposure per camera here. Um, if if uh, if you want, and here I'll set exposure compensation and specifically set it on manual in here. So that should we should be happy with that. And finally, um, so spatial temporal sampling, we've done that uh, here, temporal sampling. And so finally, what we want to do is just put the overlap ratio on 0.1. Okay, we can accept these settings. And now when I go to uh, my uh, sorry, I go down here and I can render local. So the window has opened in my other screen, I will bring it try to bring it over here. Here we go. So what we want to keep a track of is the number of sub samples down here, 16 out of 26. So uh, 256. So effectively, um, that's how many images we're rendering uh, on top of each other. Okay, so that took about one minute and 40 seconds. And if I open this image now in Photoshop, 
uh, maybe a little bit underexposed this one, but here we can see that we have image size 16K and here we're on 8% and effectively we have this image very, very, very high resolution. And again, with a perfect anti-aliasing, completely straight lines, no stepping and um, ready to uh, roll for the next um, next iteration. So that's, uh, if you agree with me, extremely impressive to be able to render this kind of image. Uh, if so, the need arises in, uh, yeah, less than two minutes. All right, I hope that was useful and uh, see you in the next video.